Welcome to another five minute video and today I want to explain the stereo normal case. So what is the stereo normal case? The stereo normal case is actually just a geometric configuration of a stereo camera and it's a special very simple geometric configuration. Let's start with explaining what a stereo camera is. A stereo camera is a setup of two cameras picturing the scene. Like the two eyes that we have in our head are two cameras picturing the same scene. And we can use this information to estimate 3D information about the scene. And that's also the reason why we often use stereo cameras, because from an image pair, we can estimate the depth information, so how far is a point away from a camera, something that we cannot do with a monocular camera. And the stereo normal case is a very simple geometric configuration. It basically says that the roll pitch yaw angle of both cameras are identical. So both cameras basically look into the same direction. And also the offset of the camera is only an offset in the X direction. So the cameras are just shifted within the X direction. There is no change within the depth direction or within the Y direction. So the geometric configuration of those two cameras can be described by a one degree of freedom transformation. It's basically just a shift in the X direction. So it's a fairly simple uh, configuration. And Popular examples of those cameras is, for example, the uh, Bumblebee stereo camera, already a fairly old camera, but one of the standard cameras that uses a stereo normal case, both cameras look into the same direction and they only have the offset in the X direction. So why are we taking this information into account? Why does the stereo normal case matter? And the reason for that is that certain tasks are simpler to solve if I have a camera in a stereo normal case setup. These are the following things. First, the search for correspondences gets easier. So consider you have a point that you see in image number one and you want to find the corresponding point in image number two. If the cameras are in the stereo normal case, you only need to search through the same row in the other image in order to find the corresponding points. Because all points mapped to image number one and mapped to image number two will lie in the same row. At least if your camera is perfectly aligned, so you may want to inspect the neighboring rows as well, just to make sure you actually find your point. So searching for correspondences becomes easier because mathematically the apipolar lines are actually horizontal lines. The second thing which becomes easier is estimating the x, y, z location of a point just from picturing it with your stereo normal case setup. So consider we have two images and we are picturing a point P in the world. That means this point P is projected into the camera image number one and the camera image number two. And what I know is that the um, points in image number one and the point in image number two, they are lying in the same row or more or less in the same row, just based on the stereonormal case configuration. So we obtain a triangle point in image number one, point in image number two, and point P in the world, um, which is illustrated here, shown in red. And we can also see that this triangle basically passes through the two projection centers. And just by uh, doing some geometric exercise using the intercept theorem, we can actually estimate the x, y, and that location of that point P in the world. So the x location depends on the baseline, which is basically the um, the vector between the two projection centers. So how far are the cameras offset in the X direction? This is capital B over here, which is divided by the negative X disparity. So X disparity is a difference in the X coordinates of these points. So basically just how far are these points um, offset in the X coordinates in image number one and image number two. This is information which matters here. And I multiply this with the location of the um, pixel location of that point in image number one. This gives me the X location. The same basically happens for the Y location. The only thing is that I'm averaging where I found this point in, uh, in which row I found the point in camera image one and camera image two in case they're an offset in the ideal setup, they should be identical. I'm averaging here over there. And the depth is even more interesting because I can estimate the depth independent of the absolute X and Y location of the point in the image. The only thing which matters for determining the depth or how far the point is in the way from the cameras is the, um, the, the X disparity and so or X parallax. So the difference between the X coordinates of those points. If both have the same X coordinate in the image, that means this point is infinitely far away and because the offset 
uh, the, will be zero, and then I'm dividing by zero, and the larger this discrepancy, um, kind of the closer the point is to my camera. And so these are three fairly simple equations with which I can compute the x, y, z location of a point in the 3D world, given that I'm in the stereo normal case. So in the end, the two key things that the stereo normal case simplifies is the search for correspondences and estimating, estimating the x, y, z location of a point in the 3D world based on the fact that we are picturing it with our stereo camera. So in the end, the stereo normal case is nothing which is very fancy. It's just a very simple geometric configuration of a stereo camera, which simplifies key tasks that we do in stereo reconstruction. So I hope that was useful. Thank you very much for your attention.